Alright, hello and welcome back. <clears throat> we were working on our bottom heat. We found that 195 on our bottom here setting got us to about 170, a little bit over 170 degrees on our preheat. Now since we're using a lower hot air stream and an upper hot air stream, so it has three zones, we got some extra hot air power on the bottom to keep our board from sucking the heat out. So we're not going to worry about getting up to 180, 200 degrees on our preheat on our board because we're going to have plenty of power coming from the hot air. So we're going to be running a little cooler, about 170. So we have this, that set in. We put our profiles in, a startup profile. So we're going to go ahead and run this and see where we, see where we end up. Um, see at what point our chip gets up to temperature. Alright, so we're going to use the software to start it, that way we can get some graphing on screen. So I believe our, um, our gra it's graphing a green and a red line, and I believe our red line is our component, and our green would be our upper hot air unit. So it's always going to be graphing the... Uh, the top unit and one of the sensors. The HR sensor is going to be graphing with a with a red line, and then our green is going to be our our upper head unit. Whether it's an IR or a hot air, it's going to graph the upper unit only. So we'll keep an eye on our lower units, basically from the panels, from the front control panels. We added a second bottom meter. We had some trouble preheating, but we found out the one fan was still on, so that's why we were having a temperature issue. And we had a lot of heat on the right side from the uh, cooling fan. The cooling fan on these units is switched by a switch on the front, so it's very easy to forget to turn that off when you start your next profile because there's no indicator light or anything letting you know that that's still on. So you always want to remember to check your cooling fan before you start the profile. Or if you're having trouble preheating, that's the first thing to check very often that's the case. So our graph is looking pretty good. As you can see we got a good graph. Our components climbing steadily. Our hot air is holding uh, almost exactly where we have it programmed. So that's always good. We're going to be putting out a good um, a good 3 minutes and 40 seconds of preheat, so we're going to let that keep running. That's going to allow our bottom, our bottom place to heat up too, so that we're already up to our preheat temperature. So our bottom IR is pulsing, so it's already, uh, the plates are reading that they're up to temperature, so within the next couple minutes we should, we should get a max temperature on our preheat. Our panels for the hot air are still sitting at the preheat stage, so once they start climbing then we should notice a, a nice increase on our component temperature. Now we put in a set of profiles that we typically use for, um, we put in a set of profiles, it's a little bit modified version of the HR360. This, this unit is very similar in size and shape to the HR360 when you have the hot air unit on there. Um, our nozzles are obviously a, a bit uh, different than they would, should be because we're not using the bottom nozzle and the bottom right now, although we're probably getting about the same, same coverage. But our profile may be a little different when we switch that back. We're going to have to check that out. <coughs> All 
I'm going to take you in there and show you the, um, take a little look at how our bottom wiring should be. You can kind of see that bottom probe is kind of sticking out there and bending up and touching the bottom of the board. So that guy's almost up to temperature. Right sides, we have about a 10 degree shift from the left to right on the table, which is pretty good. Most preheating tables won't be won't be exact from left to right. Some are uh, the AOYUE883, for example, is uses a glass uh, like a tungsten rod um, or a glass tube heat preheater. That that one can vary quite a bit. It's probably one of the most varying preheaters. You can almost have 40 degree swing from one end of the preheater to the other side and then the um, the ceramic plates usually are pretty solid so we, we should see about a 5 to 10 degree swing from one one side of the board to the other now one thing that's affecting this probe here is it's probably a little closer to the hot air stream which is still set to 55 for preheat so that's not going to climb real high but we should be just about at our ready to kick in our hot air cycle of the preheat here our bottom heater is fully up to temperature. Our board is not fully preheated yet. But um, those probes are probably being held back a little bit by the upper hot air. Okay, so we just started our first phase. So what we're going to notice now is our bottom, our board temperature is probably going to climb right to temperature, and it is. It's climbing. It just jumped from 140, and it's almost up to 160 already. And that's because that lower hot air is pretty much holding back the... Uh, the preheat to some degree so that's what we wanted we wanted to see it climb up almost to a preheat temperature we wanted everything kind of balanced where it should be even though the hot air the hot air was running a little cool on the upper and lower nozzles we wanted to see that our temperatures were kind of plateauing out and our preheat was good so what you're going to see now is um our component it's starting to climb, and we're hitting our first first cycle of our of our um, preheat phase here. First cycle of our, our soak phase, actually. So our panels are pulling the temperature up to 150, and according to our graph here, they're dead on at 150. Our component is actually climbing towards 150, it's at 131, which is actually pretty accurate. 134, 135, 136. So it's actually controlling the, the component really well. Our, our preheat boards have balanced out at 180 now, they're probably going to climb a little more from the heat, the hot air heat. But that's a good sign. Our boards are definitely um, in the preheat zone now. Now we're on step three. Our bottom jet's going to kick on a little extra heat to help get that chip melted well. As you can see, our component now is up to 155. Our boards are holding their temperature, and this is what you want to see. You want to see your board try to maintain that 180, you know, 190, something under 200. We don't want our boards getting into a dangerous temperature. This side's actually getting pretty hot, so we're going to definitely see some hotter temperatures as that bottom hot air climbs a little higher. So. What that's going to do is if we see this climb over 200, we may actually need to kick our bottom IR heat down a bit to compensate for that. So we're going to have to watch and see. We're now climbing into our fourth phase.
Now the profile we put in here is a long profile, so our component's going to get to the to the place we want it before the profile ends. So what we're going to be looking to do is get a graph here that we can we can actually chop short and make it work for us. Um, in other words, we're going to run a profile right past the melting point, and then we're going to go back and adjust our profile to that melting point stop. So that's what we're going to be working with. Our one preheat measurement here is definitely being influenced by the uh, by the lower hot air stream. So we may need to turn that lower hot air down a little bit. Right now it's at 240, it's probably going to be a little too hot. It's actually going to climb higher too, so we're definitely going to be needing to adjust this a little bit. And yeah, you can see our hot air stream is definitely rolling across this right panel and we're actually at a dangerous temperature right now on the right panel. So we will be picking that down. And according to our graph, we're almost where we want to be, 221. So we're going to let it run a little bit past and then we're going to stop. So we're on steps five, and we're going to call it stop here. So we went ahead and shut it off. All right, so our profile was, was a very good profile at step six is right where we were finished so at the end of step five we had finished and step six was an extension was an extended time so we are going to go ahead and call step five our final final step there and we're probably going to adjust it just a little bit and maybe try to pull some heat what we want to do is we want to get this one side down a little bit in temperature so I think we're going to pull our uh, we're going to adjust our preheat down 10 degrees. We're going to take a little bit of heat out of our IR, our bottom IR, because we want our board to be in a safe, a safe temperature. So we're going to take some heat out of that, and we're going to we're going to cut ourselves off at step five, at the end of step five, which is where we hit the temperature we wanted, and then we're going to rerun it and see where we're at there. See how that takes care of our board. I made trim a little bit off our, um, we're going to definitely trim a few degrees off our bottom nozzles too, our bottom nozzle, we're going to take about 10 degrees off each, each step on the bottom.